Good morning. Chef Susan, we are in our second series today, some of which there are individuals who joined the watercolor class I'm seeing who are joining this one as well. Oh, that's great. Uh, Leanna's fantastic as an artist. So I don't see many faces though. Well, probably those are just, they're in the kitchen. That's true. Um, so allow me to introduce myself. My name is Susan Shannon. And I went to school at Johnson and Wales in Rhode Island. I've written two cookbooks. I've taught at Sir Latav and the Seasoned Chef. And this is what I like to do. I see some kids on here, which is great. So today we're going to have one basic sauce with three different meals. Chef we're going to do. You know Sorry what? to introduce introduct chef susan hello everyone i would just like to call out i see eliza on the camera eliza is a oh, young yes. fan nice to see you sweetie and yes. welcome. i apologize we all have our chef's hats on today i don't want to you know steamroll sue <laughs> but eliza and family it's great to see you welcome welcome so chef sue uh, as she was discussing, if you haven't interacted with Chef Sue, uh, she she taught a class last week, I believe, with Melissa about yes. how to make pasta. Um, so we encourage this class to be highly interactive. I will be moderating and taking questions for Chef Susan. It will be recorded. Um, and if Melissa, Melissa is likely to pop in at some point. I know that she's a little bit busy today, but this is really about learning to cook one sauce to satisfy multiple meals. And I'm going to be quiet, but if you have any questions, please um, unmute yourself. You can contribute at any time or you can utilize the chat. But welcome, nice to see you all. All right, are we ready? Okay, the most important thing you could do first is to wash your hands. And what's really important is to get the soap underneath your nails. So I'm gonna do that before I start to show you how to use a knife correctly. So this is a chef knife. It's not a very large knife, but the most important thing that you wanna know about purchasing a knife is it needs to feel comfortable in your hand, and it should be balanced. So I could balance this very easily. This is the tip of your knife. This is the cutting edge, but the correct way to hold your knife is to wrap your fingers around the base of the knife, which is called the bolster of the tang, but then use your thumb and your forefinger on the blade of the knife in the back not underneath, but on each side of the blade. You never want to put your finger on top of the knife because if the knife slips, it's really gonna cut you. So wrap your fingers around, move them up a little bit, put your pointy and your thumb around the blade. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to cut an onion because we, we're gonna use a lot of onions in this class. So this is the top of the onion. And this is the root. What you want to do is cut through the top of the onion. You do not want to cut the root off. This actually holds the onion together. So we're going to cut the top off. And then I'm going to cut right down the middle of the onion where the root is still attached. Now I'm going to peel off the outer layers. And what's really important about this is when you're cutting something round, it really needs to be flat on the board. So you don't roll and cut yourself, okay? So that's the first half. I'm gonna take the skin off of the second half. And these onions we're gonna use in the sausage and peppers. So I'm gonna cut them thin and cut it directly in half. So I'm gonna cut it right down the middle here. And you can actually use the roots to hold on to the onion. 
or you could use your fingers. A lot of people can't grasp their onion like this. So it's okay where, wherever you're comfortable, your fingers just need to be far away from the blade. So we're gonna cut this. Chef Susan, did you cut down the center of the half? Yes, I did. Okay. I still have the root attached like I showed everybody. Okay, great. All right, so now I'm gonna do the other half. So an onion is really too big to use the knife like you would correctly. Um, and I'll show you what I mean when I cut a pepper and I smash the garlic. And this is a bench scraper. It's really handy when you're moving things from your board to your bowl. And how many onions does the recipe call for, Chef Susan? It's two extra large onions. Okay. I actually like onions, so I put a little more in them. Um, next, we're gonna do the garlic. I don't know if any of you have seen this tool, but if you put the garlic clove inside the tool and you use the palm of your hand, and you go back and forth, it actually takes off the skin. It's a wonderful tool. It's actually just rubber. Um, so if you have something rubber at home that you use in the kitchen, just make sure it's clean and use that if you, it's the friction that takes off the skin. So we're gonna smash the garlic. And I smash the garlic by using the side of my knife. Now I'm gonna mince it. So the way you can mince it is just move your knife back and forth across the board. And you never use the blade of your knife to move things around. You wanna use the back side of your knife. So you use your back side of your knife to get everything to come together or, up, or else you'll ruin your knives. So I'm just mincing the garlic. So even though I'm using the blade of my knife, I'm not scraping it along the board. I'm just moving it along so I could get a nice mince. Chef, if you don't have fresh garlic, can you use store-bought minced garlic already? Yes, absolutely. I think whatever makes your life easier, you should do. Um, some people don't believe in that. I do. I don't think there's any problem with that whatsoever. So we're going to use peppers. Um, so I did a lot of prep before this class. Um, and that's really important when you're cooking yourself. It's called mise en place. Everything has its place. And I don't know if you can see behind me, but each one of the dishes we're making, I have all the ingredients out and ready to go. Since this class is only an hour and a half, I did a lot of the prep work first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the top of the pepper off. I'm also gonna cut the bottom off. And then I'm going to use my knife to go in and cut the membrane where the seeds are attached. Okay. Now I cut it open and I'm gonna lay it flat. Remember what I said about round things, they're dangerous. So I'm gonna lay it flat and now I'm gonna cut the same size strips of pepper that I cut the other two, okay? So when you're using your knife, 
you it, it's actually like ice skating. You should actually rock your knife back and forth. And if you have a very sharp knife, the pepper will cut really easily. If you don't, I would turn the pepper inside out and slice it from the inside because it doesn't have the harder exterior like the pepper. I'm gonna use the bottom as well. And I'm gonna take the stem off the top and use this as well. All same size. Okay, so that's your lesson on knife skills. All right, now we're going to start making the sauce. So this sauce is really easy. Uh, my grandmother, who is Italian, and my grandfather was Italian as well, used to make her sauce every Sunday, but it would cook on the stove for five to six hours. There's no need for that. When I was teaching at Sur La Table, this sauce is an excellent sauce. So I doubled it by four because we're gonna use one sauce for three easy meals. So with that said, I have a cup of olive oil, four tablespoons of minced garlic, two cups of yellow onion, two cups of red wine. Now, for those of you that don't want to use red wine, you don't have to. You could use, if you're gonna put meat into this sauce, that's why this sauce is so versatile. If you're gonna put meat into it, you could use two cups of beef broth, which is low salt, or you don't have to do anything. That's purely up to you. I use red wine because all the alcohol cooks out, but I also love the flavor of the red wine. Uh, yeah. Then we have, yes. Me, there's a question from the audience. Is there a specific kind of red wine that you would recommend? That's actually a very good question because it is important. What you don't wanna use is a 15 or $35 bottle of red wine. What you wanna use is a decent Cabernet or red blend that you would drink yourself there could be anywhere from eight to $12, okay? I bought this for our cooking lesson today. It's a heavy red blend and it's probably, I don't know, $9 and this is good enough. I think that's a really good point, Chef, because most people will assume to use um, perhaps a wine they wouldn't drink. And I think the call out that it should be something you would enjoy in your meal is very important. Thank you. Well, and then the other thing is if you cook a lot with wine, the wine that you use most often is a Sauvignon Blanc. And you can get a nice box wine that you could keep in the fridge and it won't go bad because there's no air, it has the spout. The majority of time you'll be using a Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, so now I'm going to add the olive oil. I'm going to get my stove going and we're going to start the sauce. So I'm adding my olive oil. How many cups, Chef? It's a cup, because remember, I, I quadruple this, okay. so I can make four, four um, recipes of sauce. Now I'm gonna add my onion and garlic. Another good point is when you add your olive oil, how do you know it's hot enough? When you look into your pot, you'll see legs starting in your olive oil. That's when you know your olive oil is hot enough. So 
So I've added my onions. I'm now gonna add my garlic, which I already minced prior to this. Chef Susan, there's another question around olive oil. If there's a specificity around light, regular, or extra virgin. Well, light is not really olive oil. You want olive oil that's truly olive oil. Light is a mixture of olive oil and some other oil. Um, I actually really like the Trader Joe's brand of olive oil. Um, anything that says extra virgin is true olive oil. And that's what you should be using for cooking. Does that make sense? So you add the ingredients once the olive oil has been uh, in the pan for a bit and it has its legs, you will then add in the other elements. Right, and now I'm gonna saute it. And once I'm done sauteing, I'll let you look at it because that's right. when we're gonna add the two cups of wine. We're gonna let it reduce so that it cooks all the alcohol out of it, okay? And then I'm gonna add this humongous number 10 can of crushed tomatoes. Nicole, are you able to see me back here? We are able to see you directly on, but unfortunately not see in, in the pot. But certainly you walking us through the steps is great because I'm presuming those that are attending are also doing the same. So perhaps you can share what you're seeing. And unfortunately we don't have smell of vision which would be great right now. <laughs> By the way, Nicole, I really love your chef hat. Thank you. I don't know if everyone can see it, but <laughs> the magic of Zoom. So what I'm smelling is it's the olive oil is very, the onions and the garlic are very fragrant. As soon as I get to this to a point where I think we're ready to add the wine, I'll show you what it looks like. Smells great. Any other questions out there? Not yet, Chef. I think everyone is currently cooking. Well, I'm happy that people are cooking with me. Normally, it's just you. Perfect. Can you see that? Yes. All right, now I'm going to add my two cups of wine. And, Chef, how do you know they're ready to go? Are they translucent in color? Yes, and they're a little softer from when I put them in. Okay, great. And you can really start to smell the garlic, so you know it's time to add something or you're going to burn your garlic. Now, how do I know I added two cups? <laughs> I used a half a bottle of wine and that's approximately two cups. Bridget so is watching just like I am. She's on the West Coast as am I. So she's taking notes and will replicate later. Yes? <laughs> Perfect. Who's taking notes? Bridget. Okay. <laughs> All right, while that's reducing, I'm gonna start the sausage, peppers, and onions, okay? So that we could work things in parallel and I'm respectful of your time. Um, so I already cooked off the hot sausage this morning. So now I'm gonna add the oil onions, red peppers, oregano, and one cup of water. And we're doing that because we want to steam the vegetables, not make them soft, okay? All the while, I'm still watching what's going on over here with my sauce. Now, 
Now, if you wanted to, generally, you could make this pot of sauce separately, and you can then also layer these on additionally. But for the sake of this course, you're doing all three at once, just more so for the community to be aware of. Exactly, exactly. And if you go this route and make this huge pot of sauce, right, you can freeze it in Ziploc bags. What I do is I put enough for one meal in a Ziploc bag, I lay it flat on my cookie sheet, and I freeze it flat. So it doesn't take up too much room in the freezer. Okay, so I'm getting my pan ready for the sausage, peppers, and onions. And I'm adding oil, onions, red peppers, oregano, and one cup of water. As soon as my pan is hot. So here's my oregano. And it does take a while for that wine to reduce. And how do you know it's reduced, Chef? So you take a look at your pan when you add the wine or your pot and get an eye level. Once it's down by half, and you'll actually see the ring around the, the pan, you know it's reduced by half. What questions? How is everyone else doing? I'm assuming everyone is, is doing, doing okay. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> You can you can turn your you can turn your audio on if you have questions for Chef Sue as well. Okay. All right. I we were just confused on what part of the um peppers and onions and sausage part we were at. We got a little behind. That's okay. So this is going to be in a separate pot, right? This is a completely different meal. So all you have to do is add your olive oil, your onions, your peppers, your oregano. And then we're going to add a cup of water because we're going to steam it. And you're going to see me. I'm going to shake it until it steams probably for about five minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're switching gears. Here is my, my sauce. You can see how much it's reduced. Can you see that, Nicole? Okay. Yes, Chef. Now I'm, I'm gonna add the tomatoes and then I'm gonna go back to my sausage, peppers, and onions. So since this is messy, I'm actually gonna add the tomatoes in my sink. So right now, to your point, there are two streams. One is the sauce and one is the, the sausage and peppers, the onions, et cetera, sauteing. Correct. And then I'm just adding a little bit of water into the can so that I can get all the tomato out of it. So with that said, I haven't, I haven't stirred anything yet. Now I'm going to stir it and put it back on the stove. And that's for our sauce. So, Chef, are you stirring the onions or the sauce right now? 
I'm stirring the sauce right now to incorporate all the crushed tomatoes. And that is gonna cook on probably a medium to medium high flame because it's pretty large. If you're just using um, one can, 28 ounces, you could do that on a very low, um, a high simmer to, to low medium. And I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes now. All right, now I'm going back to my sausage and peppers. And can you substitute, certainly if, if you're not, in, if you want to use something differently than sausage, you wanted to use turkey sausage or other types of, of meat, is that an option as well? Would that change the recipe at all? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, the way that you could do that is if you made patties, um, so if you made chicken, uh, chicken sausage patties or, or beef patties, um, you could use that instead of sausage, um, tomatoes and uh, onions and peppers. It could be chicken patties, turkey patties, or beef patties. So now that this is in there, I'm going to start to steam the vegetables on high for about five minutes. And I think it would probably help if I added the rest of the hot peppers, don't you think? Not hot peppers, regular peppers. Just put those anywhere. Yeah. Now what I'm gonna do is when I shake the pan to get the onions and peppers distributed, I'm just gonna take it, well, I would do it on the stove, but I'm showing you. So what I do is I hold on to the lid and then just shake it. So it will steam like this for five minutes till you start to smell something and then that's probably really good. And then what happens is we are going to add the wine. This also has two cups of wine. And then I'm actually going to add tomatoes. Even though I'm going to use the sauce that we're creating, I'm still going to create the original recipe. But when I make the polenta, we're going to use the sauce that we just created for the three meals. All right, we can talk about the next recipe. Um, we're gonna make creamy polenta, and it's gonna be one cup of ground cornmeal, four to four and a half cups of chicken broth, and then olive oil after, or butter, it's really up to you, and then kosher salt to taste. Chef Sue, one second. How is everyone doing with, with their progression? I know there are several several meals on the stove right now. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, perfect. One. Oh, yeah. Were we supposed to add a whole cup of water to the peppers and onions? Or are you, are you using the recipe with the number 10 can? Yes. 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 Then, then use a whole cup of water for sure. Okay. What's right. going to help? That's okay. You're, hey, look, there's no mistakes in the kitchen. We can always fix it, right? This isn't <laughs> like baking, where baking is so precise. We're all good here. So, you know, you're doing it your way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Chef, do you ever taste the vegetables to see if they're at the right consistency? Um, you mean when I'm steaming? Correct. No. All I really want them is like al dente, right? Al dente in Italian means firm to the tooth. That's all we want because remember, I'm going to add that wine. It's going to cook again. So it's just to kind of loosen them up enough so it's able to absorb everything, right? And get the flavor. Too bad my cooktop isn't right here. Seems like that's a change you need to make in the kitchen. <laughs> I, don't know my, I don't know if my husband will go for that with all the changes I've made already. <laughs> all right, so this is what you can see they're a little, a little limp, but not, they're, they're al dente. So now I'm gonna add my wine. And this is for the sausage and peppers over polenta. That's correct. Great. Two, two cups of wine. And don't forget to keep an eye on your sauce if you're cooking with me. Chef, should you be stirring your sauce occasionally or are you letting it just kind of simmer? For sure, you don't want the bottom to burn. So every five minutes or so, it's really more important once it starts bubbling. You know, you have to get it back up to temp after just adding, you know, four cans of sauce to it, uh, crushed tomatoes. Like, and you can start to see the bubbles around the side of the pot. That's when you need to stir it about every five minutes. So same with the sausage and peppers, the wine needs to reduce by half. So be patient, be patient with it. Is this a good enough pace for everybody? Am I going too slow? Am I going too fast? Particularly for those who are who are cooking. Right. For those who are watching, I bet you would like a speed last camera so we can just move ahead. <laughs> now that's the magic of television, Chef. This is in real life. This is this is a workshop. So great. There are no comments at that this point, Chef. So I think everyone is is following along. Okay, well, I'm happy to see that people were actually cooking with me. I think it makes it a lot more fun for me. Bridget, you and I will cook together separately. We'll do our own workshop. <laughs> So I prepared everything for the lasagna roll-ups. Um, so we just have to mix it together, but let's get these two under control first before we jump to that. And actually I'm gonna make the polenta next because that takes about a half hour to cook um, over slow heat. So we'll make the polenta next and then let that all calm down. I'll show you how to make the lasagna roll-ups and then we'll do the baked ziti. Now, the best part about this is a lot of these ingredients you can find in your pantry, which I think is what makes this great from the canned goods to the spices to the pasta, yes? Yeah, and the other thing is, this really isn't a very expensive meal. When you think about it, I mean, everybody has crushed tomatoes, Everybody has olive oil, garlic, onions. Um, the only thing that's a little strange in this sauce is the Kalamata olives, but everything else you have in your pantry. And the same with the sausage, peppers, and onions. You may not have sausage, right? But then again, you could decide if you want it to be chicken sausage, um, if you want to do beef, you know, there's nothing wrong with any of that. And in fact, if you really wanted to just put the ground meat in there, I don't see anything wrong with that either. 
That would be a perfectly fine meal. And chef, if you were to make the sauce in advance, you can freeze it as well, correct? Yes, like I talked about, I think the easiest way to free, uh, freeze this sauce is to do it in Ziploc bags and lay them flat on your cookie sheet. So when you're ready for a meal, you just pull that pull one package out. I mean, that's the perfect way to freeze things, in my humble opinion. So I'm gonna put the chicken broth on the stove to get it to like a simmer for the polenta, okay? We want that warm. There are a lot of pots on that stove. Yes, there are. I like lots of burners. Now, can you make the polenta and sausage and peppers with instant polenta mix just as a, to make things a little bit easier? I think so. I think so. And I was talking to one of my neighbors this morning and she asked me, have you ever made the polenta in the oven? And I said, no. She said, you should try that. I thought, okay, when we're done with this class, I'm going to look it up because Polenta, I remember my, my nana, she'd be stirring this huge pot of polenta because she had five children, plus all the children were married, plus all the grandchildren. She used to have birds all over her arms from the cornmeal coming back up. Okay. This is what it should look like. Wow. See, it's pretty well reduced, yes. All right, now I'm gonna add the crushed tomatoes and stewed tomatoes. Tiff, how are you guys doing? Do you have questions? What was that? Are you guys doing okay? Because I saw you look at the screen. Just want to make sure you're good. Okay, fabulous. I'm so I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a great cook. So I'm I feel like I'm like on an episode of I Love Lucy and I'm Lucy because I'm just like, <laughs> but I'm do, I'm learning. No, it's great. You know what? That's the whole point of this, right? It's supposed to be fun. Because then this is our homeschool lesson for the day. Yes. Okay, okay. I like That's that. That's fabulous. Um, let's see. We got to get that off the roof. They have room. Yeah. So we get bunch of stuff. So I'm reading my recipe. And I'm gonna let this go for about a, a half hour. And then I'm gonna add my sausages, which I've already pre-cooked, but not all the way through because I want that flavor in this dish. And chef, this is for the sauces and the sausage, sausage and peppers. Yes. And my pot of sauce is bubbling away. So it's doing very well. And let's see how much time we have with that. We have about 15 more minutes with that. So also the other big thing is when you're cooking to keep your workspace clean and clear or else you're bumping into everything. Um, so I try to keep it as clean and clear as I can, especially when you're making multiple recipes like we are today. Okay. 
What do we have going for the Polenta right now? I'm sorry. So we have, we have just the chicken broth going for the Polenta right now. So it's about, hold on, three cups of chicken broth, and then you should have extra broth, right? Okay. So we want to get it to a high simmer, and then we're going to whisk in the cornmeal. And then we're going to add one more cup of the chicken broth. And it says 15 to 30 minutes. It's probably going to be closer to 30 for the polenta. Okay, just, just a heads up. And so the sauce is still simmering. The peppers and onions are also simmering. And we've got the three cups of the chicken stock on the stove. Yes. Yes. We're good. So far, so good. I wish we could smell it. It, smell, it smells like sausage. It smells like peppers and onions in the house, for sure. I should turn on my fan so all my neighbors can smell my, my cooking. Sorry. All right, how's everybody doing with their chicken stock? Is it getting to a high simmer? Let me know, because then we'll do it together. So, so, then turn it up a little bit higher just to get it going. Too bad, Nicole, you're videoing, huh? Or else you could be cooking with us. I would love to, absolutely. You just the lasagna, like to reap the reward. Doesn't everyone like to reap the rewards of someone else in the kitchen? Yeah, I would like that. <laughs> the good news, the good news is that these recipes generally, I know we're doing a lot at this point all at once, but these recipes are quite simple when you break them down separately. That's what I that's what I love about these. Yeah, I mean, this would take no time at all. If you were just doing the salt and pepper and onion and the polenta, right? But we're trying to multitask so I could show you how you get three different meals with one sauce. Now, should should we be boiling any water at this point for the lasagna noodles? I already did that. I prepped that in advance. If but you have, if you have not, well, you didn't know that, so don't look at each other like that. It's fine. You can actually put water on now. It will only take 15 minutes. So put your pot of water on. And the only reason why I did that in advance is because I wanted to be um, considerate of your time. But once you see the technique, it's not a problem at all, even if you do it after we're done. So I my, think, so, go ahead, Nicole. Sorry, Chef, I think that's a very good point. And you may not have to do all of these recipes at once. I think certainly, Chef, as we're recording, you can refer to it after. So exactly. if it seems a little aggressive to do all three together, um, you can certainly see Chef who'd prepared for it in advance. Yeah, exactly. I mean. It was really just to show you the three different meals. That's why I did a lot of my own prep in advance. Um, just so you could see technique, that's what's more important than anything. And then you do it after the show is done. You could finish things up, right? So this is, this is my sausage, pepper, and onions, okay? For me, 
since I didn't cook the sausage all the way through, I'm gonna put in my sausage now and let it finish, okay? So these are pretty big sausage links. What I would do when we're finished with this dish is I would take the sausage out after everything has cooled and cut it into coin sized pieces because nobody's gonna have a big piece of sausage on their polenta, right? <laughs> what are you gonna do with it? You'll make a mess. So that's what I would do after they're cooked and firm and cool. Then I would do that and add it back to the sausage, pepper and onions. The other thing that I do that is in your recipe is at the end, I add blue cheese. Um, that was my Uncle Don's trick. It makes the sauce unbelievably creamy and adds, adds just that little bit of tang. It, it's a beautiful sauce when you add blue cheese or even Roquefort, okay? Chef, Bridget is asking, are you going to skin the sausage or does the sausage go in fully encased? Definitely fully encased or else it would break up like ground meat. And if it's natural casing, even when I take it out, when it's cool and slice it, I leave the casing on so it will stay together. Is there, um, is would the sausage and peppers cook faster if you had pre-cut the sausage before going in? No. No. Um, because the sauce will cook, still cook within that half hour, right? It's just a question of, I put mine in earlier because I didn't cook it all the way through in the oven. Um, I wanted some of that tape in my sauce. So, and the other trick you can do is you can actually fry your links in a little olive oil in that, in that pan. So you get the taste of what you're trying to cook, right? You don't have to do it in the oven. You could do it right in the pot. Therefore, it's a one pot meal. Makes your life a lot easier and it brings all that flavor into the sausage, into the peppers and onions, okay? Okay. All right, how is your um, It's stock? good, it's ready. It's ready. All right, so you have a whisk. If you don't have a whisk, you can use a big wooden spoon. Start to pour it in slowly, okay? The key is to not dump the cornmeal in there. It's to pour it in in a gentle pour. And then once that's all incorporated, add the one extra cup of chicken broth. So I don't know, Nicole, can you see this or not? I'm just adding it little by little. Yes, we can see that. Patience. <laughs> and to those who are participating with their cameras off, if you have any questions as well, please don't hesitate to unmute. And once that's in there, turn it down to simmer, right? Now I'm going to add my extra cup of chicken broth. While you're stirring? Yeah, always whisking. I feel like we need some music. <laughs> For sure, we need some background, huh? And what level is the heat, Chef? A high simmer. 
Hi, Simmer. Now the key is to just kind of let that bubble away without it, you know, splashing upwards, um, just to keep it on a low simmer. And if it gets to be too thick, you can always add a little more water. Yeah, it's bubbly. It's shooting. So you just need to keep an eye on it. Don't forget about your sauce. We should have called this, this workshop juggling in the kitchen. This is multitasking at the best. <laughs> the, all the burners are going almost. It's hot in here. Um, so we haven't put our uh, Kalamata olives in our sauce yet. Is that correct? You do it at okay. the end. And, I'm looking and at the ingredients we have left and I was like, no, I think we missed part. it. No. Okay. And you rinse them off, right? I'll do it. We, we, yeah, about going to. to right now. Good job. Because <laughs> they're very salty. Okay. So I would rinse them a couple times. Okay. 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 Sure, honey. Oh. Let me find a. See you later. Up there. Uh, right up here. There's a couple of them in there. That's a great point. I never thought about rinsing the olives. That's a very good point because that would make your sauce incredibly salty. I think it's in the recipe, Nicole. Great. For exactly that reason. Let me just check. No, it's not. So please add that to your recipe. Yes, and we'll amend the recipe and share that out accordingly. Yeah. Max. And do those olives need chop? Yes. You could chop them or you could slice them, whatever works. And chef, what are you doing at this point? You just turned the oven on. I'm I'm timing my polenta. These are kind of what my olives look like. I'm putting the timer on for the polenta since I, I failed to do so. So I gave it about five minutes and now it's got about 25 minutes to go. But my sauce is bubbling away here. You can see it reducing. So our sauce has been cooking for half an hour. You can add the Kalamata olives now if you want, or you can reduce it a little bit more. That's up to you. What? Yeah, it's too hot in here. Hi, honey. Who's that you're talking to, Chef? I'm talking to my little dog, Max. Yes. So this is Max. Oh, hi, Max. Huh. He's your sous chef. He cleans up all the extra things that you may drop. Yeah. Time to wash the hands again. Huh. He's right by the stove. So he can smell everything. Do you taste the sauce before you put the Kalamata is in, olives in, or when, when does that become an option? I would taste it after because of the, 
the salt on the Kalamata olives. And that's when you wanna add your pepper. In, in this sauce, I add just a couple red pepper flakes because I like a little bit of heat. Uh, on, your, um, on your recipe, it says one teaspoon, but that's purely optional and up to you, okay? So I'm gonna add my Kalamata olives now. How much longer does the sauce have to go? It's it's basically ready right now if you wanted to. I'm just going to let it stay on the stove and reduce a little bit more. You know, that can only help, can't hurt. Chef, can you show us the pot at some point? Yes. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but... Wow. And this is the polenta. Is does should the polenta be completely smooth or is it okay to have lumps in the polenta? Well, if you pour it in slowly, it should be fairly smooth. You know, if, if, are you going to have some lumps? Yeah, that's all right. You can hide it with the sauce on top. Eliza, how are you helping in the kitchen? What are you doing? <laughs> there you go. Good for you, Love chopping olives. We used scissors and she just had them in a bowl and was just cutting them. That's good. That works. I can. So I'm going to mix my filling for the little, excuse me. <laughs> for the lasagna roll-ups. So I double this recipe um, because the key, the fun thing about this recipe is after you make them all, you can freeze them. I thought you were making them for Melissa. Okay. I, and then you just pull them out of the freezer, prepare a saucepan, put the sauce on top, not a saucepan, um, a nine by 13, put sauce on top with, Parmesan cheese and mozzarella and stick it in the oven. And you wanna do it frozen. So you cover it first for about 45, 55 minutes. Stick a knife, a sharp knife in the middle to make sure that it's hot. Then take off the cover and let it brown nicely on top with the cheese, okay? So I'm gonna just throw in the regatta. And this is fairly dry. Sometimes you'll get regatta that's very wet and you definitely want to drain the wet off or it makes the filling too runny, okay? I chose to go my favorite route, which is to add goat cheese. My grandmother would make it just with regatta, Romano, Parmesan cheese and mozzarella. But I really like the taste that the goat cheese gives the regatta. Um, it gives it a nice little tangy taste. And how many cups of regatta and goat and, and goat cheese are you using? So for one pound of regatta, you use four ounces of goat cheese. And it's in the recipe as well. Great. Yeah. 
Okay, we have that. We have two eggs. The rule of thumb is basically one egg to one pound of regatta. And why are you cracking them there? Just in case you have a bad egg. It's very difficult to pull it out of the filling if you have a bad egg. So it's just safer to do it this way. When we were cooking, when I was cooking with Melissa, I didn't follow my own rule. When, when we were making pasta and sure enough, I had a bad egg. So now I'm just gonna incorporate the eggs and the two cheeses together. Then I'm gonna add the Parmesan and I also put Romano in here too. And then I have mozzarella. Don't forget, keep an eye on your polenta. So how are we gonna know when our polenta is done? Well, you know what I think the easiest thing to do is after about 20 minutes, take some out. Be careful, it's gonna be really, really, really hot. And taste it. If it doesn't taste grainy, it's done. Does it taste that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I'm really trying to do here is just really incorporate the goat cheese. Um, but it's been sitting out long enough that we shouldn't have any big pieces of cheese. So this is just with the regatta, the eggs, and the uh, goat cheese, okay? So I am gonna taste my polenta. So it's very creamy, which is good, but it's not thick enough yet. We want to get it thick so that you can spread it, okay? But that chicken stock makes a huge difference in the polenta instead of using water. Okay, now I'm gonna add my, my cheese, my parm and Romano. And now I'm gonna add my mozzarella. Now I have everything measured out just to make our life a little bit easier. You know, Nicole, I think it's interesting um, that if we're gonna have future demos, that even though we send up the recipes, maybe I send out a, a pre-sheet of here's things you should have prepped in advance, that, would that be helpful? Okay. I think that's a great idea and certainly different from what I've seen. So I think that's a good call. All right, now I'm gonna taste this and I know it needs salt and pepper. Oh. Actually, it doesn't need any salt, it just needs pepper. I love it with the goat cheese. You know it's good when the chef goes, mm, when she tastes something. <laughs> now my husband, David says, it's great that you like your own food, Sue. <laughs> I just talked to you, go ahead. How much pepper did you add? Just very light, Nicole. 
Um, Cause not everybody likes pepper. So I try to be, you know, conscientious about not adding it to my taste because I like a lot of pepper, but a lot of people don't. And the sauce has been simmering now for about 40 plus minutes. Yes. You could actually turn it off now if you wish. Great. All right. Now we're going to demonstrate how to do the roll ups. So at this point on the stove, the sauce is now turned off, it's resting. You still have the sauces and peppers going and the polenta. Yes, that is correct. Great. And now Thank you're you. about to do a roll up. Thank you, Nicole. You're making my job a lot easier. Okay. I'll try to, um, you can see here, right, Nicole? Yes, Chef, we can. You have a clear space for your roll up. So I'll show you what I did. So I cooked the noodles prior to class and cooled them down. And then I put them paper towel underneath and paper towel on top and then saran wrap. And I left them in the refrigerator. So my counter is very clean. I'm going to lay out the noodles first. And the more you could do this in an assembly line, the better off you're going to be. These are so easy that you're going to say, why didn't I do this before? And I'm going to get a cookie sheet ready with cooking spray because these I'm going to stick into the freezer. So you're applying nonstick. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. How many how many cups of mozzarella goes into this filling? To the are you are you using one one pound? Um, one pound. This is two pounds. We have two pounds. <laughs> okay. So and then <laughs> so um so I use two pounds of regatta cheese eight ounces of goat cheese. I used really a cup of farm and Romano and I used one cup of mozzarella. Okay, perfect. And the, and the mozzarella is really to just help bind things together. Okay. okay. Got it, thank you. We're gonna do a cup of apple farm. <laughs> And chef, in, in your estimation, how many roll-ups will this will this um, the filling that you're making make? 12 16, to 14. 20. Oh wow, okay. Great. Okay. So what I have is pre-washed spinach, which I did not um, boil or anything. I'm gonna put it in whole because when you cook the spinach, it cooks down to nothing. But yet if you put it in your roll-ups, it still comes out beautiful when you're eating it. And then I also am using a pound of bulk sausage, sweet Italian sausage, because not everybody likes hot sausage.
So I have about 12 more minutes on my planta. I'm gonna taste it again. You can kind of see it. It reminds me uh, of grits, but a little bit thicker than grits. We're almost there. All right. Thank you. So for this, all I use is a, a spoon and a fork to just add my cheese. So I'm gonna add it to all of them at once. So it's an assembly line to make your life a little bit easier. And chef, the great part about this is you're making a recommendation to do sausage and spinach, but if you have the core cheese, you can really layer in anything that you like. That's correct. In fact, I actually like just spinach and roasted corn in this. Um, I think it's fantastic. And that's a vegetarian way to go. Um, but I'm going to include those. And you don't want to overload your noodles either, or it will be screaming out of the side. And you want to keep your bottoms free from the cheese because that's what's going to seal it, okay? And you're going to put it face down that way so it seals. So now I'm just going to spread out the cheese. Anybody have any questions? How's everybody doing with all these pots going? Uh, what's the difference between regular salt and kosher salt? Kosher salt is a much thicker salt. It's a uh, bigger grain salt. And I actually cook with kosher salt. Um, you, it still requires the same amount, but I find that I like the taste of kosher salt because it's a little saltier. Um, some people will use less when using kosher salt. I don't. Because um, you're always tasting what you're doing, right? So if it's too salty, you know, you always start out with a little and add. Because you can always add, but you can't take it away. However, a good trick in soups or sauces or anything is if you peel a potato and cut it in half, stick it in there and it will extract the salt. Great question. And then in terms of when you are cooking pasta, do you typically add salt to the water before it boils or after? Always after. Because if you add it in the beginning, it pits the bottoms of your pot. So if you have really good cookware, you don't want to pit the bottom of your pot. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna add, I think I'm gonna add the sausage first and then I'll put the spinach on top. Should we still have a couple of cups of wine left over? <laughs> no. <laughs> but you, can, you can always have that to drink right now. Um, as my uncle would say, it's cocktail time anywhere, right? That's um, right. So two, two cups of wine um, in your sauce, sauce, sauce mm -hmm. with calamata mm -hmm. olives. 
but you also use two cups of wine in your sausage sausage and peppers. peppers. That's why yours looked a different color than ours. Oh, is it too late to put it in? No. Can we? Okay. You could just let it cook down. Let the alcohol cook down. Okay. Okay. But if I were in your shoes, I'd be having it right now. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you're not. A little for us, a little for the pot. That's right. So let's put it in. One for the pot. And then turn that back on. But I'm seating. So are you going to be able to handle it? Yeah. Are you sure? Turn this back on? No. Oh, this back. So it doesn't have to be loaded um, because you're going to roll it up. So you're going to have some in every bite. Okay, now I'm gonna roll from the top down because I want this bottom edge to remain clear and you're gonna be pushing it. Um, But first we need to add our spinach, leaves. I'm pasting the plant up. (laughs) Mine is basically done. So you should check yours. And what, and what would the consistency, what will everyone be looking for? Smooth. And a little grainy, because it's never going to be totally. So it's going to be smooth, have a great taste, and just taste a little bit of the grain, okay? So rather than using olive oil, I'm going to use butter. And that should give it, the cream should do a lot for the planta. So I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of butter in my polenta. And I'm just gonna incorporate the butter. Does the butter need to be salted or not? I always use unsalted butter when I'm cooking. I am going to put my filling in the refrigerator because it's very warm where I'm at. Okay, let's finish with the spinach and then we're going to roll them up. And then I'm actually going to plate the polenta for you, just a small plate so you can see what it should look like.
How's everybody's going, okay? Looks like it, Chef. Okay. I think that, again, a, the great part about these roll-ups is you could put whatever you want in them. Yeah. And I, I think if you've got different people at the table, so if you've got vegetarians or you have those who like meat, you can also make them differently. You don't need to do them all uniformly. Well, especially, you know, if you know you have vegetarians at the table, you can do spinach and corn or spinach and something else. What you don't want to put in here is something that's watery, right? It needs to have its own because the regatta cheese will just flow out all over the place. So you can't put things in like uh, squashes. That just won't work. And even if you cook your spinach first, you want to drain all that water out. All right, so now we're gonna roll. And I'm holding the spinach down just so it doesn't wanna escape. Now I'm placing it on that greased cookie sheet. So I'm using my left hand to just pull the spinach down as I roll. So you can see it's a very tight roll. It's very pretty. And are you laying them down on the cookie sheet, steam side down? Yes, one second, Nicole. It says my battery is running low, which I have a hard time believing because. We'll give new meaning to the term cut when we're done. <laughs> um, no. But for, for up, Chef, what we should try to, we should try, well, I guess her battery died. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> no. You know, in the world of, of live workshops, that's what happens. So she'll probably get it started in a minute. Um, wow. Okay. Well, so hopefully uh, she's doing the roll-ups. What we'll do is we'll probably, when she gets back on, show you what the roll-ups look like on the pan. Uh, she'll plate the polenta and the sausage and peppers. Um, and then I think the next, which will be very easy, will be the, uh, the big ziti, which is very, very easy. So give me one second. Chef is calling me. Forgive me. One second. Okay, chef is coming back. I think in the meantime, if you're, um, I would taste your sauce, make sure you feel good about how the sauce tastes. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to boil your noodles yet. Um, if you haven't, uh, you can pull, chef is definitely going to talk about that they should be al dente. They shouldn't be cooked um, and be soft because they're also gonna cook in the oven. So I think it's really important that they're a little bit hard and she'll talk more about that. So. You can pull them out, as she mentioned, you have them rest and lay on a um, paper towel and you can lay on top and then cover it with a paper towel and then cover it with um, saran wrap or a type of plastic foiling so, or coating so that you're ready to use it and roll. Uh, now, certainly when she comes back on, you'll have already seen how she can do that. So we'll probably pause on that. She'll plate the polenta, which you've already made the sausage and peppers and the polenta. Um, I think ultimately what will happen is that we'll put the polenta on the plate first and layer it with the sauce, easy peasy. So the sauce is the layer on top. So she'll combine the sausage and peppers with the sauce. 
Um, she'll layer that together on top. Um, and then you have that meal there. Um, with regards to the lasagna roll-ups, what she'll do when they're done, and she mentioned them being, if you want to freeze them, they're a great item in our home. Certainly we've used um, Chef Sue's recipes um, where we'll take the roll-ups, put them in the freezer, pull them out. Um, you can pull out for two or 10. That's again, the best part. They'll be frozen in the pan. You'll layer the pan, um, a, a baking pan with a layer of sauce. And you'll put the roll-ups down, seam side down. So as you're rolling them, they'll be seam side down um, in, the, in the sauce. And then you'll put sauce on top. Now, Chef Sue is now joining again. Um, we apologize for that. Uh, here, here she, here you, oh, Chef, Chef? Okay. Well, so, and then I think the last recipe that we discussed on here was related to the baked ziti. And certainly what we can do coming through this course is we can send pictures in email um, with how things should look coming through. And I apologize for, for the delay and, and for, the, for the mishap, but it happens. Um, the thing about the baked ziti that I just wanna call out, I mean, this is the difference in why it's easy ziti, easy peasy ziti. Um, is the fact that you actually take the sauce that you've made and what you'll do is you'll put it in a nine by 12 baking pan. You'll layer the bottom of the pan with the sauce that you've made and you'll throw in raw penne noodles, raw. And I know that seems a little unorthodox, but there, there she is. Um, chef, we're talking about, um, we're, we kind of went through a little bit. Uh, we went through the roll-ups that you've just made. Um, and okay. how they're prepared. Um, we talked a little bit about the um, the polenta. And so I think what you can potentially do, um, I shared a little bit, perhaps after this, we could, we could have pictures of the finished product and share it with this group as okay. it relates to lasagna roll-ups. Um, if you want to plate up right now, the polenta, and then we can talk through the big ziti very quickly, because I know that's very easy to do. Okay. So what I shared, I shared with the group around the lasagna roll-ups is that they're seam side down. You layer the bottom with the sauce you've made, place the roll-up down with a little bit of sauce on top, some cheese, um, and then you put it into the oven of, of which it's, it's in the recipe. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, my computer wasn't plugged in. <laughs> That's why I lost you. It so happened. So what are you putting in the bowl for or in your plate first? Give me just one second, because okay. what I want to do is I want to cut the sausage first. So there's no big pieces, right? So I'm just cutting up the sausage into links. And Chef, is there a way to move the screen down so we can see you? Yes. Tell, tell me when. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just cutting them into links. And my dog is right beside me because he smells the sausage. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna place some polenta on a plate, which I will show you. So this is the way my grandmother used to serve it. She would put the polenta on a plate first.
Now I'm gonna get some peppers and onions. I'm gonna put on some sausage. And some Parmesan cheese. Okay. However, my grandmother had a big, um, a big non-porous table, it was an enamel table. So remember, my grandmother was making for five kids, their spouses and children. She'd make a pot of polenta like this, probably this high. She would spread it out on that porcelain table. She would put the sauce on top, the cheese, and everybody would come up and take a square. So, all right, that's how that plated. So you wanna see how the, um, the ziti comes together? Yes? Yes, chef. So what I have is just penny pasta. And you want a large bowl because it really, you want to be able to move the penny around. I'm gonna get four cheeses. And you can use any type of pasta, uh, meaning in terms of the penne, right? You can use gluten-free. Um, rice pasta, rice flour, things of that nature in the box. Is that correct? If I were using rice pasta, I probably would cook it and cool it down first. Uh, rice pasta, if you don't have the right type of pasta, I know they've come a long way, but it could get pretty um, slimy. So, so now I'm gonna pour in the cheese, half the cheese, and I'm going to put in the sauce from our baked pot of sauce. And is the goal to coat the, the pasta and it together or how what what is the goal of the, the sauce on the raw pasta? The goal is to really smother the pasta in the sauce because you're basically cooking your pasta, right? What while it's in the oven. I'm going to go add more sauce. This is basically swimming in sauce. So now I'm going to put it in my pan, make sure that it's still immersed in all that sauce. I'm going to spray my pan first. It still doesn't have enough sauce. So I'm gonna add two more ladlefuls.
That looks great. Can you see it? Yes. All right, I'm gonna add the rest of my cheeses, my four cheeses. I can see a little head jumping. Yeah. Yes, he is. He's like, I smell all this great stuff. So you're incorporating the cheese into the mixture. That looks great. And then it's going to go into the oven covered first for 45 minutes or, or 60 minutes in the whole. It goes in 45 minutes uncovered, or sorry, 45 minutes covered and then 15 minutes uncovered and the top will be, will be, I mean, it depends on how you like it. If you don't like um, very crispy pieces on the top, then you can leave it covered. Um, otherwise in, in our homes, we typically take the uh, foil off and let it let it cook for about 15 more minutes. Yeah, it has this great crispy crust, so. Well, that basically concludes our lesson. Questions? You got to see it all, and I'm sorry we went beyond our time a little bit, but making three, four dishes really with the polenta, you guys did a great job, whoever was cooking with me. So any questions? Well, then we hope you enjoy this meal, and certainly with the sauce, if you have any left over, you can freeze it as Chef has said, and please share pictures of your, your finished products with us. We'd love to see it. Please, I would love to see it. Um, if you have any questions after, you can email me, Susan, S-U-Z-A-N, at modernprairie.com, and I'll answer any questions you have. Thank you for spending your time with us on this Saturday morning. If you're somewhere beautiful, you're inside the house cooking, but still, it was fun to do together. So thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.